Hi everyone, so in this lesson we're going to focus on the different types of monetary policy that can be used by the central bank of an economy. Okay, now it's important to give some context here and be aware that within the UK economy we have had a very, very loose form of monetary policy since the financial crisis in 2008. During this period we have uh, uh, had a sustained, persistent period of interest rates being no higher than 0.5%. So very, very loose monetary policy. At the same time, this has been complemented by uh, a package of uh, fiscal austerity where government expenditure has uh, been cut and the government has attempted to generate more tax revenue. Okay, so really monetary policy has taken up uh, the responsibility of providing a growth support uh, to the UK economy. And this has been used quite widely across countries that were affected from that uh, financial crisis. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at what uh, an expansionary, loose or inflationary monetary policy looks like. Okay, so fundamentally it's going to involve the reduction of interest rates. It may also, in addition to that during extreme circumstances, involve the deliberate printing of currency via quantitative easing. Of course, both of these methods help to increase the uh, money supply, the actual amount of money in circulation at any given point in time. Interest rates, of course, the cost of borrowing reward for saving. It means that the reward for saving falls. Uh, so as the reward for saving falls, you can expect saving levels to decline quite substantially. At the same time, you can expect more borrowing to be undertaken for both consumption and for investment there as well. Uh, okay, in addition to that, of course, a reduction in interest rates will cause a depreciation of uh, the currency because less money will be attracted to those, uh, those banks and the interest rates that can actually be earned within that given economy. Because the interest rates are poor, so therefore that money can be transferred elsewhere where there's better rates of interest. So therefore we have weak pound imports dear, exports cheap. So as a direct consequence, we uh, potentially have uh, this sort of scenario which can occur where exports become more price competitive uh, and imports become dearer. So that can help your net exports component within the aggregate demand formula there. And of course, this can help to boost aggregate demand in the economy. Okay, right, let's uh, just consider a diagram for this. I'm just going to uh, focus on a Keynesian style diagram and just illustrating the actual impact of such a policy. So we can see that the economy is initially at point Y1 and that corresponds to a price level of P1. Okay, uh, as aggregate demand increases due to that reduction in interest rates or the quantitative easing, we can see that aggregate demand shifts outwards and we can therefore see that we achieve Y2, an increase in real GDP, uh, which is also uh, consistent with an increase in the price level here okay so we can see that scenario playing through there right now monetarists may disagree to what extent this would actually occur because of course they believe in that long-run aggregate supply curve being completely inelastic and that we're always at a position of full employment in the longer term so they might may believe that there's a short-term deviation but in the longer term the economy will readjust to that higher price level uh, and uh, yeah, it, we will restore ourselves back at YF there, okay, or full employment. Okay, so we can see this is inflationary. We're going to generate cost push in inflation here, but consumption and investment increasing is going to generate demand pull inflation here. Uh, okay, we can also see that increased borrowing for the economy can be a little bit of a risk. And of course, household debt in the UK is at a record high right now. Uh, it's, it's quite worrying that, and some argue that having interest rates so low for such a long period of time has actually created a situation of moral hazard where people are actually encouraged to behave recklessly because they believe that interest rates will always be at such a low level. 
It's also meant that zombie firms continue to live, continue to uh, be kept alive. These are firms which are not very profitable, but they can survive because of those low interest rates. And some argue that this has a negative impact on productivity because that capital, which uh, should be uh, allocated elsewhere in the economy, is taken up by those zombies firms. Okay, and we can also see that low savings are likely to uh, be apparent in this scenario. So let's contrast this with a contractionary, tight or deflationary monetary policy. Here we've got interest rates being raised, it's cost of borrowing, reward for saving, uh, actually increases, so saving levels are expected to increase here. Meanwhile, consumption and investment will decline as borrowing costs rise uh, and people and firms are incentivized to actually save more. Okay, we're also likely to see uh, the currency gain strength against other uh, competitive countries and uh, strong pound imports, cheap exports, dear. So therefore, there's likely to be a decline in exports and an increase in the actual amount of imports within the economy. So our net exports position worsens and we can see this is likely to lead to a decline in aggregate demand. So again, if I just focus on this here, uh, then we can see AD1, uh, right, and we would see that shift, sorry, this would be AD2, and this, of course, would be AD1. Okay, so we can see that shift take place here, uh, and the price level actually fall from Y1, uh, sorry, the real GDP fall from Y1 to Y2, and the price level would also fall from P1 here down to P2. Okay, so we can see that impact taking place there, okay? The economy slows down. So we're also likely to see a worsening current account position, of course, and this does conflict directly with macroeconomic objectives. We've also got uh, increased unemployment as well being caused by this sort of scenario. Okay, so final evaluation to finish this in style. Well, we've got the conflict of monetary policy with other macroeconomic objectives. That's a nice obvious one to go for. Okay, what about the impact on particular economic agents within the economy? So having interest rates so low for such a long time has actually penalized those people that have been very, very prudent and have saved a lot and put lots of money away. Whereas actually for borrowers, having such low interest rates uh, and uh, having inflation actually uh, erodes the real value of their debt. So this can distort incentives, of course, and can actually encourage people to think, well, that's worked well to borrow more at this time, so maybe I should borrow even more because inflation will help to erode the actual uh, value of that money and so on. So yeah, it can disrupt incentives there, future incentives and future uh, yeah, financial prudence really. There's also time lags to consider. How quickly will the time lags be actually uh, apparent within the economy? So how quickly will such, uh, such scenarios actually take place? Changes in exchange rate are likely to take place very quickly, but of course, if you've looked at the J curve in international economics, then you'll understand there's a difference there when it comes to your net exports positions between the short run and the long run. Okay, uh, there's also the argument that the UK economy has been a liquidity trap, and that is where, in essence, that the economy has become unresponsive to uh, low interest rate changes, so interest rate changes themselves. Okay, so that's a, another interesting concept. Finally, there's one other Keynesian perspective which is also interesting when it comes to expansionary or loose monetary policy, and that is the concept of the paradox of thrift. And the paradox of thrift really means that while you may reduce interest rates like, uh, like we have done so here, um, well, in theory, that should generate more consumption and investment, but actually, people may actually just choose to re repay their actual borrowing. Uh, and initially, that was certainly taking place, so people were believing that the actual reduction in interest rates wasn't going to be as effective as they first perceived. 
perhaps final area to uh, just tackle is if you are just looking at quantitative easing, you could also uh, argue the impact of this on asset prices. So when it comes to uh, other asset prices, what's happened to the stock market, what's happened to the housing market during this sort of scenario where we've had those persistently low interest rates and that quantitative easing, well the stock market has soared uh, and the housing market has really, really, really rocketed. Uh, so interesting stuff. All right guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks a lot.